Hey guys, it's me, Doka, and today's random video is about ADHD. Um, I haven't posted about ADHD in a while, but I'm posting about it because not enough people speak on it and share their experience um, as they're going through it. And honestly, sharing your experience with somebody else, it can really help them. It, it really helps me when I hear people uh, talk about their journey and I watch them through the journey. So I want to be consistent in posting these vulnerable videos and um, I just want to be real and authentic and hopefully I can <laughs> um, help somebody out here. But I do have ADHD and I was diagnosed when I was in college. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that I found meditation to be incredibly helpful. Um, hmm. Need water. That's one of the side effects of ADHD medications. You need a lot of water. Um, I thought graduating from college would make the fact that I have ADHD irrelevant. Um, but actually, it's made it more dire. Right, when you're in school, you have to meet deadlines and stuff like that all the time. So it was difficult. It was really difficult. And I would fall into bouts of depression. I would have anxiety attacks. All that negative stuff. I, I mean, I could, wouldn't get out of bed. I wouldn't even go to class. So, sometimes I felt so bad. I couldn't even get up to go to class. The blinds were closed. And there was no one who seemed to understand me. And I would even join, um, like, the ADHD group in school, and it really seemed like, it really didn't seem like anyone understood me, even in the ADHD group. It, I was just like, am I crazy? You know, it was nice getting the diagnosis, because since I was a little girl, I thought there was something wrong with me. There's something wrong with me that no one can pinpoint, because I'm not actually for the longest time when I was little, I would always wonder, am I crazy? Am I crazy? Am I crazy? And then finally, someone said, you're not crazy. The fact that you're even asking shows that you're not crazy. You're just creative and unique, right? And so um, I always thought, oh, why can't I just be a normal person? So when I was diagnosed with ADHD, that was a relief. There was a reason for why I felt different and for why... Um, it seemed like my brain worked differently. And I was elated to have a label and to have to know what to now search for if I need support. Um, and to learn how to view ADHD as a blessing in some instances. But um, I still didn't feel understood. Um... But I thought, you know what? It's not going to matter. I'm going to graduate and I'm going to live my life the way that I want it and nobody can tell me nothing. Well, now I'm graduated and I'm pursuing all of the things I ever wanted to. And now more than ever, it's important, right? Because now it's like, this is my life. This is my life and what I want to do. And um, the only one I have to blame if I don't succeed is myself. So that actually makes managing ADHD that much more dire and important. Um, so it was just, I think in February, that's when I really started taking my ADHD seriously. And I think my awesome friend, I'm not going to say, I don't know if I should say her name. <laughs> I don't know if she would want me to say her name in this video, but I thank her so much because she's also an ambitious young woman and we realized we got to get this mental health crap in order if we want to have the success that we want. And she really pushed me to start taking um, my ADHD management seriously. So I did. Um, I tried Concerta. Um, terrible side. I crashed. Crashed really bad. I tried Vyvanse, which was better. The crash made me incredibly depressed okay so i learned that okay if i increase my water intake and eat 
more food more regularly, then I can avoid that. But then I had trouble falling asleep if I took it later on in the day. So now I also take Evikio and I just switch off between the two whenever I need it. Evikio is not as popular, but um, it it's more short. It lasts a long time for a short term medication. And um, I like it ish. The medications, they're great when I'm at, at work. Um, I don't. I have several different jobs, so I don't take medication for all of my jobs, but there are some jobs where it really helps, and it's great at work. It's fantastic, but when I am at home, or when I'm out and about, or when I'm just at home, those medications, I don't really notice anything. Um... It kind of just makes me feel like like I'm in a low period and then maybe it starts I don't know if, if it wears off or it kicks in I don't know but then at some random point I'm like oh okay I'm ready to start doing things right and, and it's kind of it's kind of weird because that's what happens to me usually <laughs> that's what happens without medication I kind of like uh, okay I'm ready to do work. Okay, let's do let's do some work. So I don't I can't tell you I can't say that these medications are awesome. I'm just happy that I have the prescription so they're there when I need them. So I was using the medications and I realized okay, there's more than just the ADHD. There's something else here. Because my emotions started getting to me. Okay, so I was, you know, I was happy. I'm on my meds. It's helping a little bit. And then something happens that really causes me some emotional distress. And I just can't, I just can't get, I can't move. I can't move. And um, so I'm like, okay, I need some help with the emotional aspect. And, you know, I often read about ADHD and depression how they can be linked to ADHD causes depression. And I, you know, I was like, yeah, I can see. I buy that because I have bouts of depression from time to time. But I would always be able to get out of my funk, you know, just start exercising, go out, meet new people. I was always able to get out of my depressed funk. <sighs> but I... Uh, I guess with all the changes going on in my life that, you know, I, I took it upon myself to be like, let me go see a therapist and see what I can do. Someone recommended something called grief recovery method. So I found a therapist who can do that. And she actually suggested something else for me. She, she suggested EMDR, um, which I mean, just Google EMDR, but it's a therapy used for people with post-traumatic stress disorder. You don't have to have post-traumatic stress disorder. You can be someone who's just going through a hard time and use uh, EMDR um, to help. And I only did three sessions. And what we realized was that my ADHD is bigger than I thought. And my ADHD has a much bigger emotional component than, than I ever realized. Um... And it really is the cause of a lot of negative emotions I have about myself <clears throat> ever since I was a little girl. I wasn't diagnosed when I was little, so I didn't know about ADHD. But ever since I was a little girl, those symptoms caused a lot of disappointment, a lot of anxiety, a lot of sadness, a lot of... All of the I have a list of negative feelings here. It caused a lot of these feelings, lack of confidence, and I just grew up with that. So we stopped the EMDR because it was apparent that it wasn't therapeutic, you know, um, for me anymore. We learned something, and we learned, you know, about why it's not being therapeutic because. Um, it wasn't one event that caused my emotional 
uh, like sadness. It was a whole bunch of events throughout my whole entire life because I had ADHD. So we started doing this is cognitive behavioral therapy. The first part of this program is you learn organizational habits and then you start learning about um, how to manage your habitual negative thoughts that kind of exacerbate your ADHD. So, you know, things like mind reading, you know, you're acting as if you can t read our, our minds that we're thinking negatively about you. Or things where you just, you're looking at the world through a lens where everything's not good, everything's bad. Um, you know, things like that. You should, every negative emotion is kind of tied usually to a, one of those type of thoughts and there's, my therapist calls them the 30 dozen. And so we're working on learning how to intercept that. Um, but the other day, the bout of depression I had was beyond what I was used to. See, what I'm used to is maybe once a month. On a, When things are good, um, maybe once every other month or once every three months. I just get really sad and I just feel bad and I just want to be left alone and... I kind of wallow for a day or two and then, you know, I get back out there. But the other day it was like I just wanted to give up on all of my dreams. I just didn't care anymore. And I just felt bad. I felt like a black hole inside. It just felt bad. There was nothing I could think, say, watch, read, believe, or think that would remove that horrible, deep, painful emotion that I don't even know what the name of that emotion is. Other than that's what I imagine depression is like. Um, and I was even thinking, I can't imagine, like I'm feeling this for no reason. Okay, there's no good reason for me to feel this way. I can't imagine what it's like to actually have a reason to feel the pain that I'm feeling right now. Um, it just felt so bad. It felt so bad. So it, it caused me to take the depression aspect of ADHD seriously. Um, cause I didn't, I didn't know what to do with it. It, it, it. I'm already dancing all the time. I'm exercising. I meditate. I'm eating more. I'm, I take my fish oil. Like, I'm doing all of the things that you're supposed to do. I get sunlight. I'm gardening. I, I'm doing things that I love. You know, I'm doing all the things that normally that I normally would be like, oh, I'm not doing that. That'll help. There was nothing for me to... There was nothing... I'm praying <laughs> every day. I, would, I felt like... I'm doing everything and I feel this way and I have no idea what this is. It was scary for me. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, I'm learning to manage my ADHD, but I'm also figuring out this emotional depression component as well. And I don't have answers right now. Um, but this depression component of ADHD is legit. It's serious. And I'm finally taking it seriously. Um, I'm just doing, I guess, the best that I can. That's all that you can ask of yourself. And there are things that make me feel better. Like, there's, I just can't be depressed when I'm with... When I'm hanging out with friends, like, you know, there's some, I just can't, can't feel bad. And then also, I don't feel bad all the time, you know what I mean? Um, but after that other night where I felt that horrible pain, I thought about how since I was little, I grew up with 
that feeling, that negative feeling that was caused by my ADHD. And I, you know, when I think about it, I'm like, you know what, I have that kind of every day, every day. I'm walking around with a part of me that's just so tender and so hurt. There's a part of me that is just constantly <clears throat> hurt. It's kind of like, like if you jammed your finger and like at first it hurts really bad, right? But then it starts to heal and it just kind of, it just keeps hurting a little bit. But you, you know, it's not, it's not that painful. You can get over it. You can grab things. You know, you can get over it. It's not that painful. You can just ignore it, right? And I realized I, that's how my emotions feel every single day. There's this little sore, wounded part of me that just lingers. And I ignore it. And it's like, whatever. Whatever. Um, but I'm starting to take it seriously. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it means. I don't know. And I'm still able to do things, you know, I push through and do things and I still have my personality and all that kind of stuff. But I'm starting to imagine, you know, I don't know if that tiny pain is normal. And I am pretty sure that tiny pain exacerbates my ADHD and... What do you even do to get rid of that? And what is life like without that? I wonder. So until next time, I'll have to keep you. <laughs> you're going to have to subscribe to this channel to find out what happens next. Especially if you're dealing with the same thing. Because I don't know anybody who's talking about this. And I hope that my experiences can help somebody else. Live the life that you've always dreamed of. I believe we should never, ever, ever give up. Never give up. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, never, ever, ever give up. Because for as long as you're alive, it's your duty to, to find joy in it. So you can share it with others. You have a special gift that only you have. And if you give up, you can't share it. So never, ever, ever give up. And I certainly won't. So until next time, peace out.